All right, guys, welcome to module two, and we're going to go ahead and jump right into this, okay? So module two, we're gonna call this one assumptions about tithing. You know, how did we get here? As you know, there's all different kinds of beliefs about tithing, and the church has been wrestling with the topic of tithing for thousands of years. You know, should we tithe or should we not tithe? How exactly did we get here where we're in a place where the church just can't seem to agree about tithing? How did we get here, okay? So as I said in the last module, the most <clears throat> common views about tithing today is that it's a universal principle that should be obeyed. That's it. Again, probably most Christians believe that you won't face judgment from God if you don't tithe, but they do believe that it is a principle that God wants us to obey to experience blessings and you know to live a better life. Uh, Tithe advocators believe that this position is clearly taught in the Bible. They say that tithing is everywhere in the Bible. You know, you can clearly see it. Because this is the most common view, we're going to kind of focus like the first part of this, uh, this study on that view. We're going to take a look at people that believe that we need to advocate for tithing. You know, we're, But the number one question that you should always ask about certain beliefs that people have about Christianity is this. Where does it say that in the Bible? You actually need to input that that language into your, your, your daily language. That came out kind of weird, but you need to keep that question within your daily language when it comes to being a Christian. In other words, you need to always ask that question when people tell you things about the Bible. Where does it say that in the Bible? And allow them to show you where it says that in the Bible. Let's ask that exact question about the common view of tithing. Where does it say in the Bible that tithing is a universal principle that God wants us all to obey? Okay, so we just asked that question. And the reason why we're asking that question is because we need to think about why you've come to this belief in the church. What scriptures have caused us to say this? What statements and beliefs and events have led us here? And as it turns out, to just kind of be blunt and upfront about it, the Bible does not clearly say anywhere that tithing is a universal principle that all Christians should obey. Now, up front, I'm not saying that this is not a belief that is taught in the Bible. I'm just saying that there's nowhere in the Bible that clearly, where this is clearly written, that tithing is a universal principle that all Christians should obey. Quote, unquote. This really is just an assumed belief that's based on misinterpretations from various different scriptures throughout the Bible. So let's think about just Bible study in general for a minute. There's a big challenge that we all face when we have to learn the Bible, and more specifically when we're trying to learn the topic of tithing, because <clears throat> many people are going to tell you that the Bible says this or the Bible says that. But what they really mean is this, the Bible says some things that I am interpreting to mean this or that. So in other words, the Bible does not explicitly and clearly say that tithing is a universal principle that needs to be obeyed, but people are still teaching it because they think that this is what some scriptures are teaching in the Bible. Okay. So these scriptures don't say that, that's not what's written, but that's what they believe they mean. Do you understand? So the idea of, of tithing being a principle that God wants Christians to obey is really just an assumed belief. This, this is a really important thing to say in order to understand the rest of what we're going to learn about tithing. Because there are certain things in the Bible that we just know. Because the Bible clearly says it, right? So, you know, for example, Everyone here, we, we all know that Jesus rose on the third day because the Bible clearly says this, right? It clearly says that Jesus rose on the third day. We know that Paul persecuted Christians because the Bible clearly says that, right? We know that it's good to honor your mother and your father because scripture clearly says this. We know that if you give a little bit of money to the ministry, you're, you won't reap much in your life because the scripture clearly says this, right? We all know that scripture, you know, if you sow little, you're going to reap little. So all that stuff, we just know, right? We absolutely know it because the Bible says it. However, we don't know 
that there is a universal principle in place that says that God wants Christians everywhere to tithe, specifically 10%, because the Bible never says this. So that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's, it's an assumed belief. You know, when we say that the Bible is teaching something, but it never really exactly says that anywhere, we just need to admit that we're assuming things from the Bible, and hey, we all do it. We all assume things sometimes out of the Bible, but it doesn't mean our assumptions are automatically wrong. It just means that we we need to, again, we're, we're coming to this lesson with a blank slate, and we need to just accept the facts and realize that, hey, some of the things we believe about tithing is just assumed because it's not written anywhere in the Bible. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the five-step process that people take whenever they begin to believe in tithing, okay? We need to think about why this is believed. What is the nature of how people come to this conclusion if the Bible just doesn't mention it? Now, let me give you the five-step process that many believers go through to arrive at their conclusion that tithing should be done today. Let's start with number one. This is the first step. They start with just the basic knowledge that some people in the Bible gave a tithe. They know that this is a religious practice and that people do it in the church and they know a little bit about tithing. Their church probably requests tithes from their members and they hear about it during many services. I know that when I first uh, started going to church, I didn't know what a tithe was, but somewhere along the line, you know, through sermons and you know things my pastor was saying about tithing, let's give our tithes 10%. You know, somewhere along the line, I, I just kind of got a basic knowledge that, hey, I need to tithe, you know, to my church. My church teaches me I need to tithe, and, you know, people in the Bible gave a tithe. So I started with that basic knowledge right there. You know, I really didn't study it. I just had that basic knowledge about tithing. Number two, the second step they take is that they begin to hear their ministers teach more about tithing, and they believe that they believe that this is the reasonable way that God wants them to give to the ministry. You know, they might hear ministers constantly teach through scripture that tithing is biblical. You know, they, they're then convinced that this is the ultimate way that God wants people to provide for the ministers. Again, once you hear it enough, you just begin to believe that, hey, this is the reasonable way that people need to support their church, right? Churches need to be supported. But as you know, churches are not for-profit businesses. You know, they're non-profit businesses. So how are we going to keep the lights on? Well, through tithing, right? If I tell everyone to give 10%, then we're going to have a surefire way to make sure that the church continues on and that the lights are paid and that the light companies and water companies are happy, right? So they hear their ministers constantly teach and give scriptures about tithing. So the, the second step is that they just get convinced that this is the way that Christians are supposed to give. The third step that they go through is this. They then find out that Abraham gave a tithe before the law was ever given. I'm going to say that one again because this is the, a big one. Step three is they then find out that Abraham gave a tithe before the law was ever given. Now, somewhere along the line, a minister is going to tell them that Abraham tithed before the law was ever given and that this happened because tithing was not just a law thing, which is what some non-tithe advocators like myself are saying, but this is something that God has always wanted people to do. So they say this because people who don't believe in tithing, like me, have an argument that since tithing was a part of the Old Covenant law, and since the law has now ended with Christ, we don't have to tithe anymore, right? That's what a lot of non-tithe advocators like myself would say, right? That tithing was of the law, and the law has ended, so therefore we don't need to tithe. So there's that argument. Now, but what, what tithe advocators seem to say is that because Abraham gave a tithe even before the law ever existed, this proves that tithing was not a law thing so you guys need to stop saying that because tithing was not a law thing it was before the law was ever given and so they hear ministers saying that the tithe was before the law the tithe was before the law the tithe was before the law and then they just kind of use that as their foundational proof that we need to tithe 
and then they didn't accept the belief that since tithing did happen before the law, they believed that we should still do it today. Now, step number four is this. They use Hebrews 7 to enhance this belief. So they get that belief that Abraham tied before the law. And then step four is they use Hebrews 7 to enhance this belief about Abraham. You know, after the minister tells them that tithing was before the law, so it's not a matter of the law, they then take them to Hebrews 7, which they say that since Abraham tied to Melchizedek, who was a picture of Christ, we should tithe to Christ by tithing to the ministry. Ah, you see that there? That's the fourth step. We're going to learn more about all this later. I promise you we're going to learn about Hebrews 7, Melchizedek, all this stuff. But that's the fourth step that people go through. After Abraham, they didn't go to Hebrews 7. Now, step number five, here's the last one. They then take scriptures about tithing from the law out of context to promote their view that we need to tithe. Okay, I'm going to say it again. They, the last step is that they take scriptures about tithing from the law out of context to promote their view that we need to tithe. Now, with this assumed belief that tithing is a universal principle suggested in the Bible, they're, they're now free to use any scriptures under the law about tithing to teach the quote-unquote spiritual universal principle of tithing. Now, I need to explain this more because I know your, your brain train is probably smoking right now. It needs to be explained more because it's a little more complex. And it's actually really quite fascinating how this is done by tithe advocators. So let me give you an example. As you know, many tithe advocators use Malachi chapter 3 to promote their view that of the tithing principle, right? If you don't know, this is the famous passage about robbing God if you do not tithe. You know, will a man rob God? Yes, you've robbed me in tithes and offerings. We'll look at more at this passage later, but for now, just know that it's a commonly used passage by tithe advocators. Now, in context of Malachi chapter 3, everyone knows that this passage was spoken to the priest under the Mosaic law. It wasn't written to New Covenant believers who are no longer under that law. It was written to the priest. That's the context. But to a tithe advocator, somebody who believes that tithing is a principle for today, the context of Malachi 3 doesn't matter because in their minds, they've already proven that there is a universal spiritual principle of tithing that exists somewhere out there in the ether. To them, God wants everyone to tithe and every generation, regardless of what covenant they're under. I'm going to say that again. To a tithe advocator, God wants everyone to tithe in every generation, regardless of what covenant they're under. So even though Malachi 3 is technically a law-based passage, which it is, Malachi 3 is was written under the law, while they were still under law, uh, in the tithing law, it was written to the priest. Even though it's a law-based passage, They'll still use it to teach principles of tithing, such as if you don't tithe today, you're robbing God. They'll say that, yeah, that's another that's that's under law, but we're just talking about the principle behind that scripture. So we might respond to that statement by saying, but the passage you're using to teach tithing is under law. You're using Malachi 3, and that's under law. We're not under this way of doing things anymore because Christ ended the law. So it's it's just not good to use a bunch of law-based scriptures to back up your view about tithing. That's what, that's what we would say, right? That's a valid argument. But they would say, a tithe, tithe advocator would say, but I'm not teaching this from the spirit of law. Yes, this passage is under law and God does not operate like this anymore. But there's always going to be an everlasting rule of tithing. So we shouldn't take the scripture so literally and automatically just throw it out the window because it's under law. Because there are spiritual truths here about the universal rule of tithing. God wants us here in the new covenant to see the typology of the scripture and apply it to our day and hour. So in other words, if they robbed God by not tithing, we can rob God if we do the same because we're also supposed to tithe after all. Abraham tithed before the law was ever given. 
Do you see their logic there? Therefore, even though most Old Testament scriptures about tithing are under the Mosaic law, tithe advocators say that they point to a bigger picture. They point to the universal tithing commandment. Even New Covenant believers need to obey. So in other words, they can use any scripture under the law to strengthen their belief about the universal tithe. How do they do this? By spiritualizing it and pointing it back to the principle of tithing, which is all just an assumption. That's how they do it. So from this process, from the five-step process, we can then see that the very nature of how a person arrives at the conclusion of tithing for the church is flawed. It's flawed because it, it starts with an assumed belief that begins, you know, maybe around step three, when we say that Abraham tied before the law. You know, all these assumptions begin to come in around that time. And they think that since tithing was done before the law, this shows that God has always wanted people to tithe, not just those under the law. They call it a principle of tithing, quote unquote. But is that true? We're going to find out in the next module. Okay, so stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you there.